vacation homes as well as safe and unsafe areas. Get Prudent Places USA for only $29 plus shipping by calling New Millennium at 888-803-4438. That's 888-803-4438 to order on the web or at berkeywater.com. And now back to Sherry. And welcome back to the show, everybody. Is she ready to go yet, Steve? Is she calling uh, yet? Not yet. Okay, so we're still waiting for Constance to call in, folks. And until she calls in, I'll just go over some of the stuff I released this week. Uh, got a couple things. What I wanted to do was touch on the tip of prophecy that nobody really gets to. And so what I did was I released some articles that I had written on eternity and on uh, the Battle of Armageddon and the Second Coming of Christ. Uh, a little overview of the analysis of the book of Revelation that I just love reading that. It just kind of puts everything into perspective in just a couple of short paragraphs. And then one of these articles uh, probably has to be one of my all-time favorites. Uh, is Teach Me How to Pray. I got an email from somebody a couple of weeks ago and, and wanted me to write something and, and, and teach people how to pray. She tell them how they're supposed to pray. And so I sat down the other night and I had about an hour or two and, and I just sat down and wrote this out and you know it's probably one of my favorite articles right now other than the one on the kingdom that I wrote sometime last year uh, about the kingdom of God and you can read all these articles at my website at sherryshriner.com uh, but one of the I'll go ahead and, and give an overview on this until Constance calls in uh, is that the, the biggest reason that most people's prayers are not answered it's because they're not asking in alignment with Scripture for the things that they're supposed to be praying for. You know, the churches teach that God is a give me God, uh, give me, give me, give me, uh, you know, or if, if they pay, sow seeds, which has always been a heresy teaching, heretical teaching, you don't have to pay for anything from the Lord. When you ask in alignment with Him and His Word, his, his, everything He gives to you is free. And so you don't have to go to these churches and pay these beasts money so that they can go out and buy another Mercedes, uh, just so you can get a, a you know prayer answered. They can't answer your prayers. Only the Lord can. Sherry. Yeah. Your guest is up. All right. Well, welcome to the show, Constance. Well, thank you, Sherry. Good to have you here. I was talking a little bit about Javier earlier. Javier Solana. Okay. And you know, I, you know, I was looking at that website we went over earlier, and I'll, I'll tell everybody, you know, out of the blue today. Constance sent me an email, and we've been talking back and forth all afternoon. And so we talked a little bit on the phone, and I asked her to come on the show tonight. Okay, just and, continue the conversation. Yeah, and so this wasn't planned. Otherwise, I probably would have had, you know, I would have promoted it, promoted it during the week. Uh, I did promote it, uh, you know, an hour or two before the show. Uh, but I didn't, uh, it, was a, it was a surprise, and it was great to hear from you. Thank you. you know, Thank you. It was great to hear back from you as well. And, and you're the author. You wrote... Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow. That's right. It was the first major anti-New Age book out there. And, and somebody, one of my friends, had mentioned that to me last year, and, and she'd asked me if I'd ever heard of this book called, you know, Hidden Dangers of the Rainbow, written by a Constance Cumbie, and I'd never heard of it. And, and she had just said that it made it, it made an impression on her life, and, and she'd read it as a, you know when she was younger. Okay. And, and just all these years, it had made such an impression on her. Well, and that's so, nice to know. I thought that was amazing, uh, you know, when you wrote me out of the blue today, and go, oh, this is the Constance Covey I've been hearing about. <laughs> and, I, and back when I was doing the New Age research, uh, I was reading uh, Tex Mars, Johanna Michelson, Dave Hunt. Those were my favorite authors at the time. Mm -hmm. I think you said when you started doing the research for this book or when it came out, I was, uh, I was in high school. Yeah, I think I'd gotten all those people started on that topic. Yeah, you, you're the one you're driving force behind everybody, huh? Uh -huh. It always takes somebody, and then everybody else gets moving. Right. You know, somebody gets the ball going, and then everybody else will jump in. Yeah. And I've seen that myself over the last, you know, four years ago when I put up the watcherfiles.com. Nobody had websites on aliens. Mm. <laughs> oh, I've had, okay, we have to have, to have to have a conversation about that as well, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and so now it's just snowballing. And, and, you know, back at 911, one website started, now there's a million. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, you started the ball rolling on the New Age. And, you know, it always takes somebody to get the information started so everybody feeds off of everybody else. <laughs> right. Uh, but 
you, you, you nailed, and this is something I didn't do back then, was nail anybody in particular as involved with the New Age. I, I, I was going after more or less the, the preachers that were preaching the doctrines. Right. Because even 12 years ago, I didn't know anything about Maitre or Sananda or Jermaine. Mm -hmm. And I've spent a good deal of time the last several months on these guys okay. and tying them into the New Age. And so you have a different handle on the political realm. Right. I, well, I noticed it from a political and a religious standpoint and started putting the pieces together. And, and then I, I thought, where are they getting this? And I started tracking it down to their sources. And when I found the sources, I had almost a feeling of pure unmitigated anger for a while. <laughs> well, why don't you go ahead and give us an overview on some of the things you've discovered? Well, I stumbled onto the New Age movement in 1981. It, uh, the first thing that prompted me to look was an odd line of reasoning I found in Christian books. And I found books with titles such as We Can Worship God and call him um, by a variety of, of pagan monikers, how the great Krishna, whatever, God's ways aren't our ways, perhaps this is what he intended for us. And then the same books were spelling out a political agenda of a new world order and a mysterious type transformation that people would have to undergo on this terribly crowded planet in this global village. And I realized as a former political speech writer that these were terms due to prompt a sense of urgency in people. And it had somewhat of the look and feel of both a political campaign and religious indoctrination. So I started pursuing the, the line to see if the trend existed anywhere but in Christian bookstores and I found out that the secular bookstores were loaded with books on the same themes, and virtually everything was good for you, but monotheistic worship of God. You could, um, if you were a polytheist, if you were into earth worship, if you were a Buddhist, if you were a Hindu, if you were anything but a, a, a Christian or a Jew, or even um, a Muslim, which because the New Agers put down basically all three except for the Sufis, which is a very New Age branch of the Muslims, uh, that you were basically you were uh, unkind to your wife, you couldn't take good care of your house, your yard, so on and so forth, that you had to have a religion that you saw yourself as embedded in nature, that we had to have this paradigm shift. And so I started following the leads, and I didn't make a lot of sense of it until I ran into a book that became popular in 1980 called The Aquarian Conspiracy by Marilyn Ferguson. And everything I was find, finding dismaying, she found is giving us hope. And she had a chapter actually boasting about some of the developments in the church. She said, now the her her heretics are gaining ground, doctrine is losing its authority, and knowing is superseding belief. And she quoted from something called the Aquarian Gospel of Jesus the Christ, which was uh, a very important link. I found the book, I'm sorry to say, in a Methodist bookstore across the street from where I had a law office in downtown Detroit at that time. And chapter 14 uh, talked about a mighty master soul coming to earth, a light greater than Jesus who would lead the way to the throne of perfect man. And I remember slamming that book shut and saying that is a direct satanic prophecy of the Antichrist. The introduction by Levi, this person that they describe themselves as Levi, or this scribe to Levi, I guess it was his wife, whoever, and it said that the Aquarian master sitting in council had formulated an answer to the question, was Jesus always Christ? And they said, no, just as Edward was not always king, um, neither was Jesus always Christ, that he had earned the degree Christ by a life of strenuous service and equipping himself to receive the Christ consciousness. And, of course, we as Christians know the scripture, who is a liar but he that denieth Jesus is the Christ. He is antichrist that, uh, that uh, denies the Father and the Son. And then um, uh, they said one may enter fully into the spirit of the God of force, and that reminded me of a passage in Daniel. He shall honor in his estate the God of forces, the God whom his fathers knew not. And so I had to get more of a handle on this. I didn't have the terminology. How are you going to look it up in the dictionary if you can't spell it? So I decided I would carry those two books around with me and see if anybody picked up on it because Marilyn Ferguson and the Aquarian Conspiracy had suggested that there was a large network of people into this that they would watch for cues and signals, and if they, if they heard any of the familiar buzzwords, 
they would pick up on it in a hurry, but if they heard any hint of criticism, they would quickly clam up and change the subject because their ideas had been too easily misunderstood.